scoring once and assisting on the three others in a 4-2 St. Louis win. For the fourth time in April, the Blues had avoided elimination. Tonight, the North Stars try to clinch at home. The Norris Division Final Game 6. North Stars and Blues, next on Sports Channel. Bill Clement, I'm Mike Emmerich. Yeah, it's all sold out here again tonight. They're already chanting and cheering. The North Stars fans are revved up. Can their team do it? They'd better do it, Mike. I can't see the North Stars winning if this series goes seven. So for the first time in the playoffs, they find themselves in a must-win situation. Blues obviously must win because if they lose, they're out of the playoffs. Double must win. That's why it's going to be good. There's one dis uh, description that we've not had of Brett Hull and Adam Oates that often this year, and that's pointless. That's what they were in the last game, yet their team won. There isn't a team in the NHL that has kept Hall and Oates pointless in two successive games. The North Stars will try to do that tonight in a tall order. There is no question the Blues are absolutely dependent on the production of Brett Hall and Adam Oates. The big question is, can the Blues win two consecutive games without production from Hall and Oates? Well, that's the question we pose to Adam Oates today. Well, first of all, I don't think, you know, they're going to be able to keep us off the board offensively for that many games. Um, I really hope we can. We have some guys that are playing very well for us, but I think that if Brett and I work hard, we get enough chances. You know, they kept, of us, kept us off the board the other night, but we had lots of chances we just didn't execute. And I think sooner or later, we get those chances we will execute. It should go to the big snipers, but it also at playoff time has to go to the goalkeepers. And tonight, Vincent Riendo will be in goal for St. Louis. He said he didn't get much sleep after game four probably did after game five because that was successful. John Casey was pulled in game five. That hasn't happened to him much this year. Be interesting to see if there's a problem in his adjusting tonight. Well, Mike, I think most of the pressure early in this game will be on the North Stars. It's a tough situation for them. Bob Gainey has to look into his locker room and look for veteran leadership, and I think he has it in Neil Broughton and Bobby Smith. You combine their playoff game totals, just about 250 between them. Neil Broughton played on a gold medal team in 1980. Bobby Smith won a Stanley Cup in 1986. Lots of experience. They know what it's like to play in big situations. They have to help the young guys. And their coach knows, too. Bob Gainey was a part of five Stanley Cup champions in Montreal. We asked him if there was something his team needed to do tonight that they didn't do two nights ago. I feel that if we missed anything in St. Louis uh, in game five was a little bit of tenacity. Uh, we've been involved in, in most of our games where we've been able to strike out in the lead and uh, take control of the game early, uh, depend on a solid defense and goaltending to carry us through. And we were involved in a different kind of game where the home team facing elimination uh, showed a strong start to the game and, and pressed us until they had the lead. Uh, I felt with a little more tenacity and grit that we could have stayed in the game and we did score two goals in the third period which uh, if we had shown some of those signs they might have been enough for us to get back into the game and, and really challenge it at the end. I don't know if you can hear me from the noise, Bill. If you can hear me, hand out the check marks in the edge. It's tough to give a team a decided advantage in a sixth game, but I gave it to the Minnesota North Stars. Most of the check marks on the left for St. Louis occurred as a result of their play in game five. The North Stars have been building their check marks since the first game of this series. The slight edge goes because of the home record. The North Stars have only lost twice here since the All-Star break. I think in a slight edge, that'll be enough to get the North Stars through this one. St. Louis was great on the road in the regular season. In the playoffs, they've only won one road game, but that was game six at Detroit. They had to have it. They gotta have game six tonight here at Minnesota. We'll see if they do it in a moment. 
Park. I'm Bob Papa. Let's take a look at tonight's headlines as we continue with our Campbell Conference coverage. And the Kings looking to continue their comeback bid. Two years ago, the Kings trail the defending Stanley Cup champion Oilers three games to one. Wayne Gretzky in his first year with the Kings led the charge. Los Angeles won the final three games of the series. Will the real Gretzky and Messier please stand up? Wayne Gretzky is just four assists through five games. Mark Messier has one goal and one assist. And the Bruins in Montreal prepare for their showdown. That will be tomorrow night, game number seven. Montreal is 3-0 and against the Bruins in game number sevens. And right now we are getting set uh, to take you right out now to the Met Center. Right now the Blues and North Stars are getting set to start. And this should be a very exciting situation because what we have here is Minnesota trying to wrap things up on their home ice. And what's happening with the Blues right now, they have to try to get on the gun early because we see what's happened with the Minnesota when they get an early lead. Well, when you take a look at the Bruins, they're a team that thrives on an early lead as well. And when you take a look at the place of Bruin, you take a look at their troubles at the Forum in Montreal as they get ready for that game number seven. The Bruins... 0-1-15 oh and and in overtime at the Montreal Forum in overtime. Well, that's uh, the place of ruin for the Bruin, but they're returning to home ice. Minnesota is on home ice as well, and they are pumped, and so are their fans. Here with the call of the action, Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement. of Jim Bowers, who loosened up his tie to sing the Star Spangled Banner. We're going to do the same thing. Vincent Riendo, his 20th straight playoff start tonight. His starting is no surprise. No surprise at the other end either. Perhaps Bob Ganey saved John Casey from confidence damage in game five by pulling him. We'll wait and see. The referee for tonight's game is Andy Van Helleman, the linesman Randy Mitten and Gord Frosiker, the standby officials Dan Marowelli and Ron Finn, the off-ice officials from Detroit. Again, Bob Ganey starts McCray, Bureau, and Churla up front. This time, though, Hull and Oates will not be opposite them at the start of the game. It'll be Basson, Lowry, and Sutter. Snaps and Marowa, the veterans on defense, Dahlquist and Tenorti for Minnesota. Chris Dahlquist bangs one off, misses for McCray, and down for a quick icing. So just 10 seconds after we start, we stop. Brian Sutter knows a good thing when he sees it. The only time Brian Sutter in this series has changed his lineup has been when the team has lost. So the St. Louis Blues are going with an identical lineup from game five. Why change? That's how superstitious Brian Sutter is. And plus, it was a winning combination. The North Stars have made one change. Their first change since the playoffs against the St. Louis Blues began. Bob Ganey has taken young Mike Craig out of the lineup. Ulf Dahlen is in. That's the only change for either team tonight. Fasten and Bureau for the faceoff. Rossiker drops it and off the tie-up. It's to the wall and to Nordy. Mastered by Lowry, dumps it back for Dahlquist. Then over for Churla, rushed by Snaps, and it's brought right back out by Bureau. Bureau moves on Merwa, fires, and that one dropped by Riendo. Merwa able to guide it back off. Basson stepped into by Turla. Big hit on Basson by McCray. McCray flips off Rich Sutter. It went to Merwa, stepped into by Turla. And a stoppage of play, just 38 thundering seconds after the start. Any good hits so far? Whoa. Well, Brian Sutter declared his starting lineup first, and then Bob Ganey countered. One of the guys out there was Basil McRae. Another one was Shane Churla. Mark Bureau centered the forward line. Big hitting early. How much adrenaline do you think there is trying to climb out of these bodies? And a bunch of it did already. Watch this rush heading up the ice. Harold Snips was absolutely taken out by Basil McRae and then Dave Lowry. Crunch on Chris Dolph was two dandies. Basil McCray talks things over at the bench. Adam Oates is out. Brett Hall on his right. Gino Cavallini on the left. Don Gay to draw with Oates. Butcher lays it over for Paul Cavallini. Flips one high, and Chambers will go back to get it. Chambers and Brian Glenn, the defense tandem for the North Stars. 
If you're just joining us, 19-10 to go. First period of our contest from a sold-out Met Sports Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. The North Stars with the lead in the series, three games to two. Butcher drops this one back in. Headed for it as Chambers took a hit, cleared it along, battled for, and Paul Catalini flipped one wide that skipped right across the goal mouth. Butcher with it. Butcher stepped into by Madano. Plenty of time and some room for Gagne to get there. Tried to pump it along. That didn't work. Gagne has to head the other way this time, away from Oates and to Modano. Gagne able to step ahead with it, picks up Stu Gavin. Gagne controls, flips one in front that went wide as Gagne was surrounded by three St. Louis Blues. Gavin goes down and the puck squirts loose, taken by Paul Catalini. It sure didn't take long for Bob Gagne to get Stu Gavin out there against Brett Hall. Now Gavin looks like he's going to come out with just about any line that leaves. Usually Brian Propp is out there with Gagne and Madano. First time out for Gavin because Hall was on the ice. He was with that Gagne line. Giles' shot went off Paul Cavallini. Around it comes for brother Gino Cavallini. Paul Cavallini steps into Bellows. Gino turns it around behind for Garth Butcher. Two minutes gone in this scoreless first period. Brian Propp got some help from Wilkinson to turn it back in and a feed from Propp across. Moving with it is Bobby Smith. Smith bumped to the corner by Brindamore and the puck fed by Paul Cavallini back down. They say no icing on this plate. So Casey just bumps it back out for Tenorti to carry. Spins it ahead, tipped back in by Propp. Riendo sets it up this time and the captain Scott Stevens off the glass. That one tipped further by Brindamore and again Mark Tenorti to play it. Two and a half gone in this first period. Pass just past the breaking Brian Proppin down the ice. And icing is finally whistled down, and the fans disagreed. There was some uncertainty for a moment, but all the way back it will come near John Casey. See, he has been able to play within himself. An introvert to begin with that concentrates on keeping his anxiety level down, on underreacting. And he has done that every time he has stopped a puck. We have only seen him come close to losing it once. He took one punch in game two and then went right back into himself, into his focus. Oates and Broughton for the faceoff. Blues control. Hull across. Brown shoots. Oh, and that one head high. Screamed right over the crossbar. Stevens a drive. And that one went wide. Tipped back out by Dolan. But we get a stoppage of play. Andy Van Helleman has signaled a penalty, and the first power play of the game will be going to St. Louis. Gaetan Duchesne is protesting, but he will sit. The North Stars know one thing. They're not going to be able to get Stu Gavin out there against Brett Hall all the time. So the number two guy, Gaetan Duchesne, and as the pressure was on, Brett Hall in both of his shifts so far has done nothing more than fight it out in front. See Hall landing on front of Duchesne? I think that's why Duchesne was arguing. He said, listen, he pushed me as much as I pulled him. That's not the way Andy Van Helleman saw it. Holding to Duchesne, 247 of the first. The Blues power play has sure come on in the last two games. Six for 19 over the last pair of games. Overall in the series, seven for 33. And the one that it had scored earlier was put in by one of the North Stars. So they have some confidence there as well as in goal as Riendo has tapped and Brown nearly loses and does. Stu Gavin plays the four corners. Tenorti chips it back in. If you're just joining us, under 17 minutes to go in the first period. Only one shot on goal, and that by Minnesota. St. Louis has the first power play. Paul Cavallini blasts one around. Crunching the boards is Casey to stop. Hands to Tenorti. Flipped one that's kept by Paul Cavallini. Broken up by Broughton, and here he comes. Broughton is loose. Look, shoots wide. Around the boards, a big hit, but the puck came back to Chambers. Outstanding defensive play by Jeff Brown. He didn't bother reaching for Broughton until just when Broughton was going to shoot. Broughton shot wide because of Jeff Brown. 105 to go on the Blues power play. Paul Cavallini brings it on. Shuttles one around the glass that skipped away from Casey. To the boards goes Brindamore. Giles trying to spin, but lost it to Oates. A shot is turned aside. Back behind, it's Brett Hall again. Hall to the point, Paul Cavallini. Shovels one, tipped right on goal, and Casey hangs on. Well, the Blues' power play is alive and well once they get set up in the zone. The North Stars perhaps a little over anxious on their penalty killing, pressing, but one time it did work. Neil Broughton intercepted the pass, comes all the way down. Watch Jeff Brown, just when Broughton shoots, there. Perfectly timed to force Broughton to pull it wide. 
Vincent Riando looked like he was going to have to stop a point blank shot. Never even came close. I mean, Jeff Brown hit him and Broughton missed by a couple of feet. The small things look huge, don't they? Such as winning a faceoff. Gwynn and Broughton to test for this one. 45 seconds still for the North Stars to kill. Kurt Giles is there. Good keep by Butcher. Hands over to Stevens. Shovels one. Calmly blocked away by Casey. Fed to the point to Stevens. Opposite side Butcher. Shovels another one and that went wide. Rebound couldn't be finessed by Tuttle. Picked up by Gavin and flopped back down the ice. 22 to go on the Blues power play. Garth Butcher with the long pass ahead. Worked across now. Quinn ahead for Tomlinson. Tomlinson dumps it behind. Tuttle couldn't get there. Instead, it's Gavin. And again, the Blues chase. These fans normally stand to salute the penalty killers. We're down to the last three seconds of the power play for St. Louis. Out of the box to Shane. Popped back in and tapped to the corner by Wilkinson. Couldn't be taken by Quinn. Up the boards for Brian Bellows. Head mans it out. Puck carried on now by Chambers from the defense. Duchesne a drive, and that's blocked away by Riendo. Wilkinson to the corner. Lost, though, to Butcher, and Butcher passed it and will have to go right back to get it. Duchesne rammed into him, and Butcher goes down and covers up. Puck underneath him, and Andy Van Helleman blows the whistle to stop play. We'll return in a moment. All right, Gaetan Duchesne took him into the boards, and as soon as he hit him, watch this hit. Yeah, he got him high, didn't he? Duchesne looked around immediately for Andy Van Helleman's call. Andy was standing 10 feet away, said, no go, boys. The big crunching will go unpunished tonight. That means there should be a good deal of it. The North Stars established that sort of game early, then had to hold back while they were killing penalties. And with a hit like Duchesne just put on Butcher, they've registered that game again. That's not emphasis enough. Take a look at those numbers. 17, McCray. 27 out of your picture right now, Shane Jurla. Lowry and McCray for the draw. Blues prevail. Brown hacks it off the boards. A difficult keep, but he did. Tenorti right on for Jurla. Behind Riendo, swatted over to Scott Stevens. Stevens just shovels it ahead, and then down to the ice went Brown on a North Stars check. Longquist buries a man. After he had turned it in, that was Rich Sutter, and here come the North Stars back out. Moving ahead is Bureau, dumps it to the corner. McCray goes down, wanting to buy a penalty. That didn't work. Big hit from behind by Churla on Gino Cavallini as you watch Oates bring it back. Gave it up to Bureau, and he sends it back down. No icing on this. That's not a bad play by Bureau. He knows that he needed a change because the Hall, Oates, and Tomlinson line made it over the boards and caught them out there. They don't want to be out there if they can avoid it. They need Stu Gavin out there against Brett Hall. Puck poked away by Gavin. Punched on back, but Chambers is there. Turns it right back out for Gagne. Loaded one away from Gavin. Played by Paul Cavallini. Gets away from the swat of Madano. Paul Cavallini ahead. Rolls it too far for Oates. Cut off by Chambers. Sean Chambers with some room to come back. Three on three. Chambers leading it in. Got by one, but not two. In the third, Garth Butcher took it over. Butcher's pass on the money for Hull. Across for Oates, but tipped off his stick to the seats. Adam Oates before this hockey game talked to us about the production that they needed to come up with. And you may have heard in our open, he mentioned that he thought they got their scoring chances. And that's how offensive players measure their success very often when they can't measure it by the points on the board. As long as Adam Oates and Brett Hull are getting their offensive chances, they're going to be happy guys. It means that the North Stars don't have them completely tied up. So then what they bet on is their ability to cash in as long as they get the chances. Chances first, point production second. Puck frozen again. Bill, in our open, you had mentioned that you feel this is the biggest game the North Stars have played. What about game six against Chicago in a prior round? I think it's a different situation. They were never up three games to one against Chicago, so Chicago never had the chance to come back with huge momentum. Besides that, the North Stars had already won two games in Chicago, so going back I don't think would have been as devastating. The third thing is, I think they had the Hawks on the run halfway through the series. It wouldn't have mattered even if it had gone seven. Not so here. Paul Cavallini tried to get it to Lowry, and was he ever hit by the smallest man out there? Kurt Giles. 
Sutter has to work it away from prop in close quarters. Paul Cavallini to Lowry, and he just wants to be rid of it. Giles goes back to get it. 12 minutes, 50 seconds to go in the first period of this one that's had a lot of thumping, but no scoring yet. Luck to the seats, clock stop, no score, midway in the first. Let's pause for this regional break. Ryan Sutter yesterday said, you go with the guys who have done it for you all year. When he was quizzed about starting Vincent Riendo in game five, players coach, they didn't let him down two nights ago in St. Louis, did they? This one set up by Casey for the carry by Dahlquist. Dahlquist walking ahead, fires one into Harold Snap. Finesse back by Rick Sutter, but foisted back in by Dahlquist. The North Stars are able to clear. It's a legal play, but the Blues have it. Snips, Lowry, and back out. The North Stars will have to chase it down this time. Blue stick, Basson able to pick it up. We get an icing touch-up and a face-off to come back near Riendo. You know, the Detroit Red Wings said one thing that happened to them in game six against St. Louis was that they were so impatient. They wanted to win at home in the first five, ten minutes. What are some of the other things that teams are are showing out there when they show impatience. Well, I, I think it can it show itself in two ways. There's offensive impatience, and that's what this I think the North Stars did in game five. You try passes to people that are just not open. You force the play offensively. And I think also you're reluctant to dump it in. You, you have bad reads in the offensive zone, and as a result, you commit turnovers in the neutral, turnovers at the offensive blue line, and the North Stars did a lot of that in game five. So those are the symptoms for offensive patience. You try to make the play that isn't there, and you don't read the play well enough. Vincent Riendo had a shutout of Detroit in that game six, and it was predominantly the younger Detroit players who later said, yeah, we just were so tight because we wanted to do it for the big home crowd. And the point Bill made at the top, guys like Bobby Smith out there to take this face off, should be able to keep that youth situation that the North Stars have a little cooler here. Brown, Sutter, and Brown once more. 12-10 to go in the first. Pass ricochets back in, and so again it is Scott Stevens to play on a part of the defense. Hands it back over for Lowry. Lowry moves it on, locks one in that skipped over the stick of Neil Wilkinson. Wilkinson brings it back. This coming with under 12 minutes to go in the first period. No score in the game, just five shots, three by Minnesota. Bellow stepped into his man, along it comes. Big shot by Glenn, and that one went wide. Around now for Lowry. Shouldered on the play by Bellows. Picked up by Oates. Oates trying to shake free and can't do it. Brought up by Scott Stevens. Hands ahead for Brown. Brown feeding over for Lowry. Lowry trying to get in deep and Chambers denying him. Bobby Smith comes by. Can't get it along the Madonna. Now in second effort, he'll be able to carry it back out. Smith ahead. Feeds it up the wing. Carried by Glenn and fired. But that deflected to the seats by Garth Butcher. Boy, these two teams are showing their defensive power. There haven't been many good chances at either end, let alone shots on goal. One thing that a guy like Bobby Smith can't communicate to his team, but you know he's thinking, is that this game, to a great degree, is going to revolve around who gets the lead first. It has been the pattern throughout the playoffs for the North Stars, especially in this series. They have predominantly held the lead, and I think that the first period, the subplot involves a race to the lead. If the North Stars can keep the crowd in it and start nailing that coffin shot, I think the Blues will sag a little bit. On the other hand, the North Stars have to feel the pressure, and their crowd will be taken out of it if the Blues score first. So getting on the board early, perhaps opening up a two-goal lead, big items. The arm wrestling contest for the first goal has gone twice as long and even more so than it has in any of the earlier games. Game one, Gagne at 146. Game two, Gavin at 26 seconds. Giles in game three at 334. Bellows at 112 in game four. And Brindamore the last game at 146. We've already gone eight minutes and 50 seconds into this sixth contest. Huck flipped back out. Brian Glynn to get it. Dumps one off that is shouldered away. To the corner goes Ron Wilson. Wilson centered one. And Casey stopped that one and then held on. John Casey has to be careful not to be too aggressive. When Ron Wilson went into the boards, Casey choked up on the stick, getting ready for the poke check. See him with the knob of the stick in his hand. And sometimes when you're in the middle of that maneuver, your feet will get a little happy and move away from the post. Wilson just jammed that one for Casey's skate blade. And Casey was there to take it, but he was in the middle of preparing for something else. 
Best opportunity in the game thus far, if you're just joining us, was a breakaway by Neil Broughton shorthanded. But just at the last second, Jeff Brown put a quick hook onto his arm and caused the shot to go wide. Wolf Dolan gave it up to Butcher. He in turn gave to Sean Chambers. Able to pull away. Chambers starts it back, handing over for Dolan. Dolan drifts to the corner. Heads behind. Dolan with a backhander, and that one went wide. Deshane behind the goal. Paul Cavallini on him, strips him of the puck. It's flipped off beyond the reach of Dolan, but he caught up to it. To the point, Chambers a shot, it bounced right in front. And on the hop, Riendo snared it, and then just took a glance behind. But he had it. A couple of shots have done this already. One from Brian Glenn a little early on the other side, but this little end over ender uh, was tipped. That's why it bounced. It was end over end anyway, but Gaetan Duchesne got a stick on it and tipped it into him. Alf Dolan with good work along the boards. His first game in this series, and that's where he has to, to pay dividends to the North Stars, is along the boards. And he's the guy that made the play back to Chain. Man, did that ever take a hop. Riendo was getting ready to catch it with his catching glove, and it went over to his right arm. For the second straight game, Curtis Joseph, who hasn't played since January, is the backup to Vincent Riendo. He hurt his knee in January in Chicago. Pat Jablonski had been the backup netminder for the first four games. And Brian Hayward, of course, the backup to John Casey. On this face off, the Blues prevail. Stevens turned right into trouble as Madonna was right on him. Stevens recovers and flipped one that Gagne got to and just spiked on his backhand to the rail. Jeff Brown to take this one. A little pass over for Oates. Gave it up to Tenorti, and Tenorti back to dump it in. Nearing the halfway point of this first period as Brown flips one, just getting up to Scott Stevens to play it. Able to give it ahead, Fred Hull up the wing. Watched by Gavin tightly. Hull forced off by Gavin, but he poked it one that came across. Up with this now is Lowry. Hands to Adam Oates, trying to dip loose from Tenorti. Around for the stuff attempt. On a backhander, another one, and that fought off by Casey. Now Oates tries the forehand, and a save made by Casey on that one. Gavin starts it back for the North Stars, hooked down on the play. Fans won a penalty, Andy Van Helleman says no, and to get it is Dahlquist. Lips it on the money for Kanye, kicked by Bellows, but not for control. Stevens with a pass, and then across Dahlquist, and Oates with a heavy collision, and Oates went down and heads for the bench. Along with this is Wilkinson, fires it back around, Riendo to stop it behind, Stevens, quick pass to Basson, run off by Bellows. Blues are able to shake it back out, and so Giles will go to get it. This one comes back, taken short of icing by Giles, with 9-10 to go in the first period. Five shots for St. Louis, four shots for the North Stars. Neither team has scored yet. Merwa scoops it back out. Gino Cavallini took that, but it was across two lines. Midway in the first from the Mets Sports Center, no score. The Edmonton Oilers will strike first. Mark Messier over to Craig Simpson. He stuffs it past Kelly Rudy, his third of the playoffs. one nothing Oilers in the first. Back to Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement. So they have a goal there. We're still waiting for the first one here. Harold snaps, flips it back out. Glenn hacks it back in. Riendo just cranes from the right to the left to watch it. Gino Cavallini forced to the corner by props. Snaps trying to pull it loose. Cavallini does and winds one for Marwa, playing in his 100th Stanley Cup game tonight. Mario Marwa shuffles one back to the North Stars glass. First one there, Gino Cavallini. Flipped one that hit off the top of the net and popped around now for Brian Glenn. Shovels for prop, hit by Marwa. Smith unable to step ahead, and Marwa makes the North Stars go back again. Adam Oates had three shots in one shift. That brought his team's total up from two to five, and that's where it stayed. The North Stars have been at least three or four minutes by our unofficial count without a shot. This time they ice the puck, and it'll come back near John Casey. So John Casey is looking at the same matchups in front of him. He has seen so much of Brett Hall in this game already. As soon as the Blues end up deep in the zone, he just parks in front. He was being hooked along the boards, but see Hall trying to fight his way to the net. All he wants to do is keep people in front. That opens it up for Adam Oates. Good stuff in front. And hard work by Brett Hall. We talked about his underrated assets in game five, one of which was his strength. He gave Chris Dahlquist everything that he could handle. And you know, to get into the zone, we saw a foot race between Hall and Stu Gavin. Gavin had all he could do to catch him, so that the speed factor is there too. 
Brett rests. Wilson is out for the faceoff. Darren Kimball on his right, Tomlinson on his left, and a ball start. It is Churla along with McCray, the wingers for Mark Bureau. Paul Cavallini and Butcher will be in back. Boy, this is a conservative feel out sort of game right now. Neither team able to get much in the way of penetration. Puck to the back. Paul Cavallini turns it right on goal. Swept away by Casey. Sent around by Wilson. Wrapped up by Bureau, and it's turned along for Tenorti. Then up for Basil McRae. McRae with a pass on the money for Bureau. Leads one over for Churla. Churla after it, centered it. That's a cross for McRae, who is carried to the corner and given a rough ride by Kimball. Centering pass by Churla. Turned aside by Paul Cavallini, and he shifts from defense to offense and nudges it ahead for Tomlinson. Dropped right back to the corner, and Tenorti will play. Blues will give them plenty of room by making a shift change, and Hall is back out there. All not working with Oates right now as Tenorti moves in. Had Churl in front, couldn't get it to him, and it's left behind for Jeff Brown. Seven and a half to go in the first, no score in the game. Blues follow up in the person of Brown. To Stevens and ahead now for Dan Quinn. Has Hall with him, feeds across for Brindamore. Brindamore couldn't get the backhander away as Brian Glenn was on him and works him hard to the glass. Glenn along for Mark Bureau. Tried to get it out, but couldn't. Giles will try this time. Giles pivoting, nice move, able to shake the forechecking of Brindamore and lug it on back, then he's hooked at by Hall. Down went Giles, play continues. It is Scott Stevens taking it, turning it back up for Brindamore. Followed up though by Chambers and then sent off Dolan back. Well, we mentioned earlier, Andy Van Helleman is letting them play and he is the model of consistency. He did it early and he's doing it now. Spike down on goal by Duchesne and a save made by Riendo. Since the Broughton breakaway, the best chance either team has had. Glenn loses. Hall moving in. Hall has a man in front. Oaks backhander on the top of the goal. Well, if you're Vincent Riando or John Casey, you got to wonder what's happening. Pucks flying all over the place, taking crazy bounces. The North Stars had their chance at the end. Alf Dolan's pass went into the air, then bounced off a couple of people, just about surprised Riendo. And then Brian Glynn had Brett Hall strip him at the blue line. You talk about chances, this is big chance number one for Brett Hall. It tells you how much John Casey gave him, the fact that Hall didn't shoot. Off Casey, up against the water bottle, then dead on top of the net. But that tells you that John Casey covered perfectly what he had to cover, because Brett Hall's first option there is always shoot. He, he's a trigger man, he wants to shoot. If you call what we've just seen a couple of breaks that went Minnesota's way, the last game they went St. Louis's way, and the prior game in here, St. Louis just looked snake bitten all over the place. They had one wiped out by a whistle as the puck was crossing the line. So maybe it shifted back to the North Stars. The early indication is that at least in two cases it has. Harold Snaps drops back to play. Six minutes, 10 seconds to go. First period, no score. Seven shots, Blues, five for the North Stars. A pass across is turned aside by Marowa. Able to handle it is Tuttle. Tuttle wedged to the boards and glass firmly by Dahlquist and maneuvering his way along is Brian Glenn. The big defenseman loves it ahead. Franks a shot and that one tipped high to the corner glass by Harold Snap. Chopped along by Marowa. Scooped up and thrown back out by Tuttle. Heard Giles to get it. He and Wilkinson, now the defense for the Minnesota North Stars. Wilkinson's pass, slowed down by Oates, turned back, and Giles dumps it out. Madano couldn't reach it. Instead, Paul Cavallini turns back to play it. As Rich Sutter ahead, Paul Cavallini took the hook from Bellows but got loose. Nice move by Cavallini. Couldn't get it to his brother Gino, and Giles tipped it back out. Butcher lays it across. Rich Sutter shakes it on. Cut off by Giles. Giles dumps to the corner. Stu Gavin goes back after it. Riango floats it from him. Sutter stepped into in the corner by Bobby Smith. Tries to get loose but can't. Overskated by Gavin. Sutter turns again, and this time a little more room. Dumping it off for Gino Cavallini, who chops it back to neutral ice. In the last 10 seconds, pretty much an example of what we've seen almost the entire first period here. Under five minutes to play now in a scoreless first. Riendo lops it over for Garth Butcher. Shovels it along. Unable to keep for a moment was Glenn and was punched by him. And it is gathered in by Bellows and put back in off of Stu Gavin's stick. Butcher to get it again. Scott Stevens chops it along. Gino Cavallini there, shakes it by Chambers. Coming over to cut it off is Glenn once more. Fasten right on him, loads it back off on stride to Bobby Smith, then over for Bellows. 
Eyed up by Stevens, but no matter, they rule it an offside play. 4.30 left in the first, no score. Cutter has to be fired up. He is looking out at a neutral zone that sees a lot more room out there tonight than earlier in the series. The Blues had it in game five. The North Stars have not really taken it away from them. Lots of skating room for the St. Louis Blues, and when Brett Hall and Adam Oates are out there, that's a problem for the North Stars, but a big advantage for Brian Sutter's guys. Scott Stevens back to get it. Broughton took it from him, has Dolan in front. Broughton to the back, and Dahlquist couldn't reach that one. John Casey tends it there. First one near him is Oates, so it's turned along for Dahlquist. Lifted back out, and Stevens gloved it in. Delayed offside, wiped out as the Blues had cleared the zone. Four minutes to go in the first period of play. The North Stars with only one shot in the last seven minutes of action. Broughton a shot, and Riengo knocked that one down and then just hung on. Boy, so many times you talk about the first 10 minutes being critical, especially when you're on the road and the Blues have survived it, actually have the edge and dominance in the game. I like this play by Neil Broughton. It was a three-on-three, -three, all lanes covered. Get it on Riendo, drive for the rebound. He had Dahl on the right side going. North Stars have had trouble penetrating, and they like to think of themselves as a team that thrives on the rush. It's up to them to recognize when the rush potential is taken away from them, like St. Louis did in Game 5, like they're doing pretty well here, and do things like Neil Broughton did. If the rush isn't there, you can't make it happen unless you've got unbelievable speed and the defenseman back in to help you out. Well, this first period ends scoreless. St. Louis will have won the period, and it will be the North Stars who will have some adjusting to do. Off the faceoff, Dolan wrapped up by Scott Stevens. Along the boards, they scrapped for it. Came back over for Neil Broughton. Giles with a pass that's knocked down by Hall. Broughton moving to him. Brad Hall trying to get by. And Broughton knocked it away right in on John Casey. Dumped along by Giles. Picked up by Adam Oates. Oates able to control. Centered one. And Brown with a shot that went wide. Rebound. Oates up with it. Out in front. Lowry a shot. Hit someone in front. Took it back to Stevens. Drive. And that one went high and wide. Oates clears, Brown with a shot, and it skipped across the goal mouth wide. Furious attack by St. Louis, but they couldn't knock it home. It is kept by Brown, but it was outside, a delayed offside now. Modano flips it, it's knocked down by Duchesne, and play moves on for Broughton. And they ruled out an offside pass, and so the clock stopped again. 3.04 to go in the first period. It's still scoreless. Mo just wouldn't do this action justice. Here's what it looked like at real speed. Brett Hull again, right to the front of the net. Boy, Dave Lauer just pulled that. I wondered how he had missed it. Lauer's shot went off Wilkinson. None of the rest got on goal, but boy, were they all around it. Harold Snaps flips one that is off of Madano. Controlled by Snaps once more and dropped back in. Clock ticks down to two minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first period. We have no score in the game. Snaps goes back along with Mario Marwa to play this. It is Marwa. Meanwhile, Snaps preoccupied with Bellows. Marwa just shoots it back down, and this taken. Back down the ice by Chambers. They rule no icing on this play. Chambers a pass on the money for Bobby Smith. Starts ahead, has Bellows on the left. Bobby Smith trying to worm his way in for Bellows, but they rule again an offside call. Stopping the clock with two and a half to go. Just a hair over anxious, but Brian Bellows knows he's got to give Bobby Smith a little more room. Especially when you've got Marois standing up, Harold Snep standing up. Give St. Louis defensemen some credit. They forced Bobby Smith to make a little lateral move. Brian Bellows is down to one jersey. He wore four different jerseys the first four games in this series. These jerseys will become collector's items at the end of the season. North Stars are going to a new look next year. Black and Mylar gold, the metallic gold with little green piping. Brian Bellows wanted to have collector's items for his brothers and sisters, so he wore four different jerseys before settling on this one. You see the Mylar star that has already been used this season. But Norm Green, the owner, is very coy about the unveiling of the overall uniform. That'll be done at a later time. Boy, you notice some real frustration on the part of Bobby Smith. Up dumped along, Dahlquist stepped into Lowry. And back to get it is Basil McRae. 
Blues able to control. Paul Cavallini ahead with brother Gino Cavallini with just over two minutes to play. Blues are in the midst of a change. Gino Cavallini just run to the ditch. That time by Bureau. Tenorti taken to the boards. First one in will be Wilson trying to pull it away, but it came back up for Churla. Basil McRae trying to bulldoze his way by, and Churla is able to head man, but too far for Dahlquist. Chipped back along by Butcher, taken by Kimball. This one turned loose, and Churla is hurt up on all fours, and for that reason, the whistle is blown and play stopped. This is not a facial injury. Something from the waist down. Shane Churla is in a lot of pain, but it looks like it's ankle knee related. Gosh, I didn't notice a thing. Play was to the other side, and then we look back to see Churla down. There would be a collision with someone. There, there is so much going on away from the play. This has been the most intense period of this series so far. And it's not only for the puck carrier, but it's away from the play. Churla was a mile from the play when he got dinged somehow. I didn't see it either. He's up. He's all right. Well, you talked about impatience, and we saw it not only on that offside call against the North Stars a moment ago, but also on the animosity that Bobby Smith and the frustration he was showing at the bench alongside Brian Bellows. And those are a couple of the longtime veterans here, so you can imagine what it must be like for the younger players who are sitting not far away. Bobby Smith has won a championship, and he has been a part of some of the glory years here in Minnesota. Last time they reached the final four, 1984. They've been in the final four five times. They're trying to get into it again. Broughton weaves for Wilkinson, fires one wide. Riendo able to scoop this one along for Paul Cavallini. Tries for Hull, chipped it along. Good anticipation by Wilkinson and good fight to drive it to the corner. Tomlinson to get that. Dolan stepped right into him. Meanwhile, it's played and neutralized by Duchesne to Chambers. Chambers works it back on, half back in by Wilkinson. Around the wall it swirls. Duchesne is the first one there. Jams it back, hoping for Dolan, but instead got Paul Cavallini. Dolan knocked it loose. Down to the ice went Broughton. Meanwhile, the puck kicked back across from Oates over for Paul one Cavallini. Minute, remaining in the first Thrown ahead by Glenn. Duchesne feathers it off, and here's Broughton moving in. Fires, and that one went wide. All the way around to Brett Hull. Feeds for Oates. Tipped it ahead with the help of Butcher. Adam Oates has Lowry breaking. Fires a shot, and it went off skates and wide. Butcher to keep it in the last 40 seconds. Flipped one off a stick that went wide. Up forced high by Oates and along for Broughton. Tried to chip it out, couldn't do it. A wheel by Lowry failed. Broughton tries once more. Sealed up by Butcher, but some room now for a three on two. One of the men back as a forward, that's Lowry. As Bellows brings it in. For Chambers, a shot is flapped to the glass. And to the corner goes Lowry in the final 15 seconds of this first period. We hit it just now. Buck dumped off the glass. Chambers rolls it along. Kept by Bobby Smith. Fed one in front. Bellows backhander went wide. Moving in is Smith in the last five seconds of the period. Coming by is Butcher. Down to the ice. Bellows and the horn sounds to end period number one. There wasn't any scoring. There were 16 shots, 10 by the Blues. We'll take a break with the score at the end of the first period. The Blues nothing, the North Stars nothing. Let's pause for this regional break. come in here as we have during the early stages of this season and seen 5,000 here you just don't know how heartening it is to see a full enthusiastic house as we have in these playoff games. Churla will go back to take this when there are no carryover power plays at the start of the second period only one minor called by Andy Van Helleman in the first that to Duchesne for holding in the very early stages of the period. Bureau can't penetrate. Help from Dahlquist. Back to play as Jeff Brown. Brown and Stevens start this period as the defense for St. Louis. Adam Oates as well as Brett Hall. They're just now getting in stride as the puck goes to Tomlinson. Plays it across for Oates. Regathers and hopes for Hall but gets Gavin. Hall takes it back and flips one. Oh, and that one a half-speeder that Casey had trouble with. 
Mark Tenorti back for the North Stars with a pass on for Bobby Smith. Crosses with Churlin. Smith with a shot, and Riendo blocks it down and then traps to get a stoppage of play. You know, I had to wonder during game five if the North Stars wouldn't be better off paying more attention to Adam Oates than Brett Hall. Through the neutral zone in this hockey game, Adam Oates has been able to do just about whatever he has wanted to. John Casey is going to face some Hall Oates shots in this period as well. After Adam Oates lost the puck, Brett Hall picked it up, and this bouncer must have changed directions on John Casey. Perhaps he couldn't make up his mind how he was going to actually stop it. But here's Adam Oates. Lots of time as usual. Puck pressure. No puck pressure by the North Stars in the first period or in this period. And the Blues obviously dangerous when they've got their key guys out there. Time and space. Simple game. Butcher didn't have much of either. Puck given up to Smith. Behind it spiked off of Bellows. Hacked at by Madonna, but taken by Brindamore. A minute gone here in the second period of our scoreless game. North Stars have the lead in this best of seven series, three games to two. The winner will play the winner of the Los Angeles Edmonton series, and we're keeping you up to date on that one tonight. That one was 1-0 Edmonton at the end of one. Up with this is Madano, a little pass across. Bobby Smith couldn't get it in deep. Paul Cavallini brushes at that one, a second effort, and he fans. Now turns it back off the boards. Wilkinson able to keep it alive. Neil Wilkinson has to hurry right on him tightly with Steve Tuttle. Wilkinson trying to pull it loose. Got it behind Bobby Smith. Oh, front of Riendo is in. Rebound and it went wide. Two good North Stars chances and a third is centered across the goal mouth. Riendo tapped it away. Giles keeps the pressure on. Rolling it around for Neil Wilkinson, but he left it behind. Big drive by Madano and getting a piece of that Riendo. Thrown back out for Tuttle. Cut off by Madano, but the follow-up comes from Garth Butcher. Lays it softly back in deep. Casey out to just hike it along, and Madonna can skate this one down, or can he? Nope, Sutter brushed it away first. Bobby Smith along for the layback on the backhand of Bellows. Thrown right back by Marawa. Spinning with it is Basson. Giles will have to go back. Blues with a shot in this period. Minnesota with a couple. 11-8 Blues in the game. No score. Marawa handles. Gives it up, though, for the carry by Wilkinson. Bumped in two, and it's shuttled back on by Sutter. Good play by Kurt Giles, or the Blues might have had a two-on-one. Stoppage of play with 17.26 to go here in the second period. We well, just think of the tension factor. Vincent Riendo said that he had virtually no sleep before game five. What a tremendous game he played then. Not been tested heavily, but he did get a couple of close ends here in the early stages of the second period, including a couple from Bobby Smith. First on the forehand, and another on the forehand that floated wide. We welcome those of you who are joining us all across Canada through the facilities of Hockey Night in Canada, along with Bill Clement, Mike Emmerich from the Met Sports Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. We have no score here in the second period. Hurdle to the ice that time was Brindamore. Buck thrown back along and taken by Duchesne. Missed for Neil Broughton. Stevens turns it along, but it's Mark Tenorti rushing it back. He's got Dolan with him. Tenorti to Dolan. The shot is blocked away by a sprawling Stevens on defense. And up with this now is Adam Oates. Oates bringing it back for the Blues. Hands on for Brindamore. Moving on Dahlquist. Brindamore tried a centering pass. A weak one sent down by Casey, but picked up again for a backhand tossed by Oates. There'll be a penalty coming up. It'll be only the second penalty of the game, and like the first, it's going to be against Minnesota. Brown hands across to Adam Oates. Feeds it over, and it is taken by Broughton. And we get a stoppage of play. Three and a half gone. Holding. 3.30 of the second period. The North Stars had done what they wanted to do offensively, getting Tenorti up on the play, but he got caught up. Coming back in was Brian Glynn trying to stop the dangerous pass that Adam Oates had centered out. So holding is the call to Brian Glynn. St. Louis, six for the last 20, over two games, plus this one on the power play. Prior to that, they were in awful shape. Overall, of the teams still remaining in the hunt for the Stanley Cup, they had the poorest power play, but that based on some quality play in the early stages of this series, and not that strong a finish against Detroit. All the way down, it is sent on Vincent Riendo. Paul Cavallini and Garth Butcher will be the point man. 
Tomlinson, the rookie, just called up in the late part of the season and early playoffs from Peoria of the International League is out, along with Hull and Oates. Paul Cavallini ahead for Tomlinson. Tries to get loose for the backhander and can't. Flipped by Duchesne. Helped further by Mark Bureau and back out. Bureau rushes right after it, moving ahead with Duchesne. Chopped away from him by Hall. Bureau there, sealed up by Hall. Paul Cavallini trying to pull it away and finally does. A minute 15 to go on the power play. Right through it comes for Adam Oates. Drops it for Butcher. Low bridge by Tenorti as he lifted it to the corner. Sean Chambers flips it back off. They can't get it out. It's fed across for Dan Quinn, but we get a stoppage of play. Not gotten a ruling. I think it may have been a hand pass. Well, the Blues have some power play specialists. One is Adam Oates. We asked Adam Oates today what the key ingredients to a successful power play are. Here's what he had to say. I think basically all five guys on the ice have to have a general understanding of what you want to do. And I think that's very important. And I think most of those guys have to be interchangeable. Um, you know, there's sometimes on the ice you just can't line up in the same spot. You know, the other thing is being able to adapt. You know, it's taken us a while to adapt this series to Minnesota taking Hully away so adamantly. And um, the last couple of games we have changed and it's worked for us. So I think basically just being able to read what the other team gives you and to adapt to it would be the most important thing. Spoken player out of RPI, Adam Oates. All-American there, watches as this play develops from Brown around behind. Not loose by John Casey. Hurt Giles, the captain of the North Stars, can't get it out. Flipped along by Brown again. Giles tries once more. Went off of Gavin, and he's able to sail it down. 40 seconds still for Minnesota to kill. 11 shots each in the game, and neither team has scored. 15.05 left in the second period. Paul Cavallini brings it on, hands back over for Brown. Flips one to the corner, Casey had a wave at it. Giles goes over and locks up with Quinn. Puck work to the back, and Paul Cavallini has to hurry it over for Hall. Hall just holds, feeds Oates, has Quinn in front, but blocking that one away was Dahlquist. Hall once more, 15 seconds to go, power play. Couldn't get the shot away, Cavallini finessed one in front, and Oates tried to turn it on goal. Brown and drive into the prone Giles, and Giles tries to seal it up, and he does. Well, I have to agree with Adam Oates' statement. The Blues are reading what the North Stars are doing and really executing well on their power. A couple of good scoring chances. If they can get the puck in low, here's what they're looking for. That two-on-one in front, Kurt Giles with a gutsy block stopped this. Then he was making angels in the snow <laughs> with his legs and his arms going back and forth, was finally able to get a whistle. But now the Blues, as the series has gone on, have read and read and read correctly. And they're getting chances now. Those of you who did not see the first period, even though there was no scoring in it, the Blues certainly had the offensive dominance and they played so well defensively. Not their, just their defensemen, but their forwards too. Rando not tested that much. The best opportunity was a Neil Broughton breakaway shorthanded in which Jeff Brown came just at the last moment to tip Broughton's hand as he let the shot go, so it was off the mark. Wilson ahead. Hacks one to the corner. Swift back out near Casey, who sets it up. The teams are back at full strength. Tuttle tried to keep that one along, but it is turned back out by Brian Croppen, and it's finessed to Tenorti. Tenorti trying to get by Stevens. Boom to the boards after he dropped it in deep. Riendo around. Now for Rod Brindamore. He has trouble. Brown tries the other side. Trying to pull by was Brian Kropp. Pop came back to Wilkinson. Wilkinson fires, and it's tipped wide by Monano. Pop tries a stuffer. Another try! to the point. Kept by Chambers. Nice finesse move, but he lost it on the hook of Brindamore. Around its turn, Jeff Brown takes over for the defense and sails it back down, and then is he ever run into by Gagne. On the turning stick of Mike Madonna it comes. Madonna wheels back up ice, pulls away and shoots, and that one just held by Riendo. Big burst of speed by Madonna. And a quick shot, but a save. Still no score. After dodging the pressure of the power play by St. Louis, the North Stars came down and put some of their own pressure on. Neil Wilkinson's shot was tipped. Brian Prop wanted that puck to come off the board so hard, it didn't. He had to go behind, got two good whacks at it. Gagne tried for it. Look at the protection. Five blues right there in front of Riedo. Good point. Well, that second one I didn't see in the regular speed live action, but that one almost trickled past Riendo for a rebound attempt. 
Adano can't force it to the goal. Rich Sutter turns it back. Basson there pulls it away and is able to get control for St. Louis. Uh, Basson drops it back now for Marwa. On for Harold Sneps. 13-15 to go. Second period. Tight game here at the Mets Court Center is scoreless. Around it comes for the turning. Modano lays it over perfectly for Gagne. Gagne had it broken up at the line. Carried in on an offside by Brian Kropp. A lot of linesmen say no, but the one with the stripe says yes. Let's return to our... Neutralized face-off to result. Bobby Smith's line is out. He'll have Gavin on the left and Bellows on the right. Paul Cavallini and Adam Oates talking things over. Why is Gavin out? Because Brett Hall is out too. Between Gavin and Duchesne, they've done quite a number on Hall. In the series, Hall with just two goals. Neither team has scored thus far tonight. Chambers blasted around. Moving in is Bobby Smith. Checked off by Butcher. Puck spun over for Brett Hall, but it kicked off him and by. Ryan Glenn to play on defense. Watched by Oates. Flips one that went off of Tomlinson. Bobby Smith reaching for it, able to scoop it along for Bellows. Can he get by? No. Paul Cavallini shot him right down. Smith guides it across. Easy play for Garth Butcher to pivot and make. Then Paul Cavallini, then Butcher again. Given up to Gavin. Under 12 and a half to play in the second. North Stars with 13 shots, seven in this period. The Blues with 11. They've had only one shot on John Casey, and he stopped it. Ahead comes Butcher, gets away from the swing of Gavin, tried to pull one in, and Tomlinson able to pull loose. Gave a pass for Oates, but he couldn't handle. Back out now, Chambers. Flipped it across, and it popped out of play at the Blues bench. So again, we have a stoppage of play. No score in this one. Let's pause for a regional. You always talk and trying to take the crowd out of it if you're the visiting team. First 10 minutes passed, and the crowd drifted out of it. They've applauded some big saves and some good attack by the North Stars, but there hasn't been much of it. And there hasn't been that much from St. Louis either. But the Blues defensively have prevailed. Midway in the second, puck played ahead by Oates. Worked up now for Scott Stevens, who blasts one off the glass. Moving in for it is Tuttle. Tuttle checked to the corner by Dahlquist and goes down. And the puck underneath Dahlquist, so play stopped once again. Yeah, one decided difference in this hockey game. Chris Dahlquist and his defenseman getting help from the forechecking style that the North Stars have. We're able to channel the rush to one side of the ice for the first three games of this series. The Blues have taken some steps in their breakout to try and work both sides. And as a result, Dahlquist and his guys can't channel it over to one side. But here tonight, noticeably, watch for the Blues with a couple of guys right down the middle of the ice in the neutral zone, and they're stopping that wide pass. What they're doing is what the North Stars did in the first three games. They're channeling the play to one side and choking it off. How do you get around that? Well, you have to support the puck. Somebody has to get near the puck carrier so that he has an option, and the puck carrier has to make good decisions. Dumping it in has to be one of his foremost thoughts when he has that much pressure and not that much to do with it. All right, we'll watch to see if that's what the North Stars do to adjust here. Brown rushed off by Duchesne. North Stars can carry this time. Brought in the head to Dahlquist, then along for Ulf Dahlin. Dahlin pivots, tries to get away from Stevens. Behind the net, Ulf Dahlin spun one up front! And swinging at it was Broughton, but they couldn't connect. Now a pass for Dahlin, and that went off him. He stepped into by Brown, and emerging with it is Scott Stevens for St. Louis. Hands on for Tuttle. Flipped one by the shoulder of Tenorti. Gathered in by Casey. Spun over for Broughton. Wheels back out with a pass on for Mike Madonna. Tied up by Stevens. Madonna couldn't get by as Scott Stevens said no on defense. Back out under the stick of Tenorti. Gathered in by Kurt Giles. 10.50 to go in the second. Still no score here from the Met Sports Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. Sellout crowd tonight watching the North Stars try to wrap it up. Hasty pass from Tuttle. Then it went too far for Brindamore. Picked off now by Giles, then along for the turning Mark Bureau. The rookie puts it on the veteran stick, and a tap by McCray comes back over for Churla. Big shot turned aside by Riendo. Marwa rockets it around, but it went all the way back to where Chambers couldn't even reach it, so the North Stars must go deeper. Sean Chambers with a head of steam up. Wilson trying to catch him, gives him some lumber. Harold Snep plays him to the boards and glass, and a crowd gathers. Still they spar for it. Mark Bureau tried to kick it loose, but Wilson interceded. Can't get it out. Lifted high by Gavin and behind the St. Louis goal. Down to the ice, a North Star, Mark Bureau. There'll be a penalty coming up to St. Louis. And Kimball comes in. 
with an extra nudge. Andy Van Helleman is checking on Bureau's condition. We'll pick up the penalty call and be right back. Ten minutes to go in the second. No score in the game. Down is in the penalty box for a trip. Snips had to go over his head. Bureau had to step on him, so he took his legs out from under him right there. And as Bureau went down, he may have fallen into the boards and hurt his knee. It looked like he was favoring his, his right knee. But Harold Snips is off for a trip here at 10 minutes even. This is the reason Ulf Dahlen is in the lineup for the Minnesota North Stars. Big, strong, good in traffic and around the net and can always seem to, to get a pass in front for a, a scoring chance. When Dahlen has gotten within his range, he's been good in this game. First power play of the night for Minnesota. Best power play in the league. 10 for 33 in the series. Gagne with prop on the left, Bellows on the right. Rotten the left point, the right point to Nordy. To Nordy, shovels one, and it's snapped up and held by Riendo. Wilson and Lowry, Stevens, as well as Garth Butcher are the four St. Louis Blues in front of Riendo, killing this one off. We had asked Adam Oates what he thought the key ingredients were to a power play. We also posed that question to Minnesota North Star's Brian Propp earlier today. For a successful power play to work, you have to have someone on the point that is a quarterback who moves the puck around, and you have to have a couple of shooters up front that will shoot the puck on net or get in front of the goaltender and create some disturbance. So Brian Propp talks about the nuts and bolts of the power play. Adam Oates talked about the overall aspect of the power play, having to read. I agree with both of them. First, got to read, then you have to have the players to execute the way Brian Propp described. The guys the North Stars have it back, Neil Broughton as well as Tenorti, but now Gagne waved out of the faceoff. Wilson goes, but not without a protest. And so Gagne will be the man shifting back to the left point. Dave Lowry and Neil Broughton to test for this one. 9.55 to go in the second. No score in the game, and the North Stars just underway on their first power play of the night. Wilson got in the way of that one, and Wilson able to lift it back out. Went out of play at the Blues bench, and so again, there'll be a faceoff, and again, it will be back in the St. Louis defensive end. sport up here. They're trying to transfer some enthusiasm down to their team on this power play to break the scoreless deadlock. Tenorti leaped into by Bassett, kicked it along for Bellows, stepping right in with Scott Stevens though. The battle continues along the wall. Trying to jam it loose was Prop and it comes to him. Prop tries to get one in front and came right on goal. Rebound another save made by Riendo. The North Stars had a great flourish, but Riendo got them both. Gagne feeds it over for Bellows. To the back to Tenorti. Bellows once more. Looks for Gagne. Shot. Mothered by the defense and a stoppage of play. Excellent puck movement by the North Stars. This whole sequence started with two outstanding keeps by Tenorti at the blue line. Then after the pileup on the boards, good pressure. I really think that Dave Gagne wanted to shoot that puck high and just missed it. Here's the action. Brian Prop, outstanding effort just to get the shot away, and then Gagne's poke at it went right into Riedo. And the shot that ended up stopping the play was Gagne's into Scott Stevens. Looked to me like he was trying to get it over Stevens and just missed his shot. He knew Stevens was down. 11 shots in this period by Minnesota. Just one still by St. Louis. 17-11, the North Stars in the game, and there's no score. A minute 10 to go on the power play as Riendo sets this up for Paul Cavallini, and the North Stars will have to go back. Blues make a change. Oates comes off. Lowry is on to work up front with Ron Wilson. Paul Cavallini and Mario Marowa, the experience in back. Neil Broughton brings it on. Franks one to the wall. 
moving in is Gagne, jammed it behind. Hucks one pass Bellows by Marouane. The North Stars again must go back. Blues have 45 seconds still to kill. Casey with a toss over for Broughton. Looks up ice and carries it on. Neil Broughton leading all-time North Star scorer. Hands over to Bellows. Broughton across for Tenorti had trouble. Gagne spins it around hoping for Brian Croft. Couldn't get to it. Hooked off by Paul Cavallini. But Broughton able to keep this one. Marches right across and gives over for Gagne. Gagne a shot in that pinballed wide. Right back along for Tenorti again. Dumps it behind for Prop for Bellows. And getting a piece of that was Merwa. Thrown off by Wilson down to the last 10 seconds. And Lowry sends it back down. So the Blues have done a splendid job in killing this one. It's down to its last three seconds. Tenorti lays it ahead. Madonna tries to jam it back in, and they do. Out of play it is. Out of the box, snaps. Penalty box empty. So's the scoreboard midway in the second. Brian Prop trying a nice pass here, but the Blues read it all the way. Marois got a piece of it. Ron Wilson was able to get it in the process. Brian Bellows was taken down. He wanted a penalty on that, didn't get one. Blues change now to bring out Chambers to work with Glenn back on the points. Bobby Smith with Gavin on the left and on the right side, Madano. Full strength, both teams. Action with 7.45 to go in the second period here from the Met Sports Center. No score in the game. Oaks pass chipped back by Madano. Moving in for this is Stu Gavin. Gavin couldn't get it behind. Puck caught to the Blues again, and Oates cleanly able to get this one back up ice for Brindamore. Moving on with Hall. Rob Brindamore moves to the corner, hands over for Oates. Oates to the back. Brown couldn't pull the trigger. Glenn able to knock it loose. Then it ricocheted back near Brindamore. Knocked down by Glenn, and back up ice with it comes Bobby Smith. Smith moves to the wall. Feathers one off the boards. That is taken by Scott Stevens, and he moves it back for St. Louis. Oates with a pass across. It's walked on by Brown. Passes it too far for Oates. Kurt Giles takes over. Again, the Blues with only one shot thus far. The North Stars have had a dozen in the period, but all of those statistics are meaningless when you see a scoreless game. This one popped to the corner. Snaps goes back. Cut off by Churla. As the crash and bash line is out there now for the Blues. Big shot by Wilkinson, and that one kicked harmlessly away by Merwa. Then he shuttled it high to the glass, and around it came for Brindamore. Pass ahead, taken by Dan Quinn, eyed up by Giles. Quinn waits, doesn't have help yet. Just drops it to the corner. Neil Wilkinson to take over for the defense of the North Stars with 6.25 to go in the second. Wilkinson shovels one ahead, goes past Churla, back down, but on goal. There'll be no icing here. Riendo scoops it for Butcher, able to play it on his backhand ahead, tipped by Gino Cavallini. Quinn across now for Brett Hall. Big shot, hit the ball! Tenorti able to pivot away, get some help from Mark Bureau as a lot of air went out of this big crowd on that drive by Hall. An icing touch-up. The clock stopped with 5.53 to go in the second, and there's still no score. The power play, they get one back. Steve Duchesne tore the net. Tomas Sandstrom, who's been injured, scores the goal. The Oilers lead it 2-1 in the second. Back to Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement. Every team needs a boost when they're down three games to one. Sandstrom had to give these guys an emotional boost in game five. You want a boost? Look to Brett Hall. He came that close to making this a one nothing hockey game and Hall has hardly shot. He's hardly had that much room out there. But even when he does, he has tried to penetrate, make a play a little closer. I'm sure the North Stars are wondering when they have to pick him up now. He, they know now that he's dangerous from everywhere. Gino Cavallini a shot in case he made that save. The second blue shot of the period. Puck poked along and followed up by Dolan. Wilson right on him, and so that play breaks down. Sean Chambers brings it on for the North Stars and sends it wide. Garth Butcher to get it. Five and a half to go in the second period. No score. Puck turned over for Bellows, but quickly brought back by Gino Cavallini. Doubles one to the corner. Wilson and Chambers go in, and they cancel one another out. Chambers got it loose, though, and poked it along for Broughton, but the Blues are able to send it behind the goal. John Chambers again. Gino Cavallini, the forechecker. Pass knocked loose off of Bellows by Rich Sutter. Chambers has to go back once more. Little pick thrown there by Wilkinson, and back on with it now come the North Stars, and it's Wolf Dolan trying to step ahead. He's got all kinds of moves, trying to get by Paul Cavallini. 
Dolan pivots, and fed one that was more of a prayer near Gagne. Brought out by Lowry and worked on now by Basson. Dahlquist trying to catch him. Basson trying to get by. And the Blues able to nudge it behind the net and go to get it. Rick Sutter trying to pull away. A lot of traffic, and Dahlquist ties him up. Basson comes by to Nordy, too. Andy Van Helleman just watching. Now blows the whistle and stops play. Boy, there's a lot of fight and fire in Rich Sutter. He's had some important scores in this series, as well as in the one against Detroit. He doesn't have a bad partner out there in the fight department either, and Bob Basson, between them, they are so hard to play against. Basson had gone wide on Dahlquist. Dahlquist tracked him down. You know that fight along the boards for the puck when the whistle blew? Chris Dahlquist had lost his stick. Rich Sutter had his. Dahlquist didn't have his. And of all the times for a referee to be standing there yelling, play it, play it, Chris Dahlquist, I'm sure, was saying, you got to be kidding me. Not now. I don't have my stick. Oates is back on. They have positioned Brett Hall back in the slot for a moment. Now they're going to move him across. Hall having a word with Scott Stevens. They'll line Lowry up at the hash marks and Brown on the other side. So Hall will be the point man on the right side. Number 16, lower left of your screen. Oates has to win it away from Gagne first. 12 shots, Minnesota, two for St. Louis in this period. Hall couldn't get the shot away. Right on him was Stu Gavin. It's brushed right back in by Brown, but sent aside by Casey. Mark Tenorti with it. Turned one along that's sent across by Madano for the carry by Dahlquist. Too far for Gavin. Riendo sets this one, and it's walked on by Scott Stevens. Stevens headmans it on for Lowry. Little pass over for Hall. Hall up the wing, and the drop to him, but Gavin punched it away. Goes right after Hall. He has to turn. Flipped it into Stu Gavin, and a recovery by Stevens. Back across for Brown again. This one went off Gavin all over Brett Hall. Still, they work with it, and Tenorti got it up for Gagne. Flipped one for Madonna. Good kick to control. Madonna a shot, and a save made by Riendo. What puck control by Madano. Puck flipped the head off the breaking hall and thrown along by Casey. Both teams getting one good chance. Madano goes down, fans upset. Puck followed up by Giles and dumped back off the boards. Paul Cavallini steps back with three minutes and 32 seconds to go in the second. Giles with a big hit across there. Ryan Glenn starts it back, nearly stripped of the puck by Oates. Glenn carries once more. Hit by Paul Cavallini, got it to Smith, but an offside call. 3.20 left in the second. From the Met Sports Center, still no score. Mike Madano has got his skating speed together tonight. He's had sharp angle shots, so you have to give the Blues defenseman credit. Madano's had shots, but they've been from just about that angle. Gives Riendo a lot better chance to cut him off. Bobby Smith on the face off with Dan Quinn. Blues prevail. Ball Cavallini to Marowak. Quickly back and forth they play it. A half-hearted pass that Smith nearly got and now does from Prop. A blast is deflected to the seats. Let's return to our studios for a tie with one and the Bobby Vaughn of the 1990s, Thomas, or is it Bjorn Vaughn of the, <laughs> the 1990s, Thomas Sandstrom with one, two. After Edmonton, it's dropped first. Prop turned one, but it went between the defensemen, and so Sean Chambers has to go back. Two minutes and 52 seconds to go. Here in the second period, we have no score. Pass missed for Prop. Riendo slugs it away. Paul Cavallini to get it. Behind for Marwa. Rushed by Bellows, and so back up it comes for Brindamore. Across for Quinn. He's got Darren Kimball with him and gives it to him. Kimball tries to step by, but can't. As it went off the skates of Brian Glenn. In the corner, Quinn wrapped up there by the checking of Chambers. Bobby Smith right out in front of his own net and right near Brindamore. But the North Stars don't get burned, although knocked down with Bellows. Ahead comes Prop. Prop across to Smith. Crosses. Backhander off Prop. Another shot! able to get that one a broken play Brian prop sense the backhander toward the goal but Riendo was able to get it boy the North Stars are getting tons of mileage from their veteran guys Bobby Smith Brian prop Brian Bellows have had most of the scoring chances Bobby Smith with a nice move and then he was getting pinched off so what do you do get it to the net Brian prop got it through Riendo was able to smother it before Bellows was able to get the rebound but why do I have the feeling that one of these teams is on the verge of making a huge mistake. There have been so many almost giveaways. 
A little bit of sloppiness in both ends. Bobby Smith came right out in front of his goal. Just about had it stripped from his stick by Brindamore. Standing here holding my breath. And believe me, I am standing. I'm not sitting for this one. Not many of the fans are either. They are most of them right now. But it's the seat they haven't sat in that much in prior games in this series. 15 shots for the North Stars in this period. And St. Louis still with two plus one loud one that went off the post from Brett Hallstick. Picked up by Madano. Madano fed it back to Tenorti. The Blues right on him, though, and it ricocheted off Rick Sutter back out. Lock winking down now to the smaller numbers, nearing the 18-minute mark and elapsed time in the second period. Tenorti brings it ahead. Lost it off the check of Brett Hull. Punched back out again by Basson, but no matter, it's an offside play. Gord Brossaker and Randy Mitten have had a lot of offside calls to make in this game tonight. And one of the reasons for that is, is the Minnesota defensemen are leading the rush. Now, we talked about the North Stars defensemen getting up on the play. They're far more effective being the third or the fourth guy into the rush than they are carrying the puck all the time. And, and it seems as if in this period, Mark Tenorti and Sean Chambers and Brian Glenn, Dahlquist for that matter as well, have lugged it up the ice 20 times and tried to beat people at the blue line. Problem with that is you get it poked off your stick and you're really vulnerable for a counterattack. So the D men are up on the play for Minnesota, but I think it should be trailing the play. Get it to a forward and then cut to a hole that's open. This thing could get even more conservative as we go into the third period if it remains scoreless. Big hit there by Tenorti knocking Basson down. As you watch Dolphus play it across, Mike Modano hoping to get some room, starts it ahead and punched it through. Just a swing by Brown, back up now for Sutter. Net dislodged at the other end, and so the play called back, and down in a heap behind the goal is Mike Modano. Mike Modano is going at it with everything he's got tonight. Give the kid a lot of credit. He has come to play in a key situation. I actually think that Andy Van Helmut owes the North Stars one from about five minutes ago when Madano cut through the neutral zone between two defenders and was dragged down. This time he was roughed up all the way to the net. He bogged down out of the high slot and continued to try to drive for the net. Scott Stevens was all over him. Well, it looks like Stevens could have got the worst of that. But as it turned out, Madonna was scraped up high in the face. He'll be all right. It's a long way from the heart. In a game six, in a scoreless tie with a minute and 37 to go in the second period. Madonna has certainly shown something of heart in this game tonight. A game which has nothing on the score sheet yet. On the penalty sheet, Duchesne a hold at 2.47 of the first, Glenn a hold at 3.30 of the second, and snaps a trip at 10 minutes. Penalty killing, flawless tonight, too. That was Dave Lowry, who was out along with Oates and Hall. Bobby Smith has Gavin on the left and Bellows on the right. Glenn back on defense with Chambers. Stevens and Jeff Brown, the defense for St. Louis. Glenn will have to go back deeper in the last 90 seconds of this, the second period. Chambers with a pass on to Bellows. The follow through by Glenn, moving right up on the play as Bill said, pass tipped across. Bellows there, drops it in deep. Jeff Brown there to hack it off the boards. It's whirled ahead and Oates could have taken it, but it was a tough play for him to make and all the way down for an icing. He was onside at the red line as the puck sailed across. But back it'll come near Vincent Riendo for another faceoff. Boy, Adam Oates and Brett Hall have met so much to the sports scene in St. Louis. Everybody knows who they are. There's even a, an item on a menu in a downtown hotel that we stay in called the Hall and Oates Combo. There's a Riendo Rubin. Named after a lot of the blues, Adam Oates had a prestige license tag, license plate for his car. It said, pass it on it. It was publicized, and two days later, after being written about in the newspapers, it was gone from the rear end of his car. He came out, it was parked right in front of the St. Louis Arena. Gonzo, price of fame. Puck to Bellow, shovels one, pad stop, made by Riendo. 
Scott Stevens up with it, and Stevens with a pass that pops right over near Sean Chambers as we hit the 19-minute mark of the second period. Scott Stevens back to play on defense. Dumps it back off. Good hit by Chambers on Basson. Brushed along by Bobby Smith. Flip back out again, and it's taken by Brian Glenn. The big defenseman hands it across to Sean Chambers, then a hit for Gavin, and that's on the money. Gavin trying to turn by. A backhander blocked away by Riendo, sent aside by Stevens, picked up by Adam Oates again, and Oates just lays it up the wing, and it'll be skated down by Brown. Brown plays it across. Everything slowed down a bit. Bob Basson trying to get to the corner, and Chambers won't let him. Moving in to get this is Glenn down to the last 22 seconds of the period. Bobby Smith moves it by and starts ahead. They've got a two-on-one. Smith in with Bellows. Flips one and a diving play made by Paul Cavallini to recover. Smith turned it on goal. And a save made by Riendo. Cavallini flips it back down the ice in the final seven seconds of the period. Brad Hall goes back, but he can't take it. Now they rule that it was a legal play, but no matter, Tenorti able to turn it to the corner as the horn sounds. Two periods have come and go. No score. Let's pause for this regional break. No score in the game. One of the noisiest ovations of the night in anticipation of this third period. John Casey hopes the trend continues. Vincent Riendo hopes it changes. 18 shots on Riendo for the North Stars. Only two for the Blues on John Casey. That tied a Minnesota club playoff record for the fewest shots allowed in a period. They had done it twice before. Welcome to all of you who are watching Hockey Night in Canada. 15,500 voices and the owners of them standing for the faceoff that begins this third period of a scoreless game. If Minnesota wins it, the series is over. If St. Louis does, it's back to St. Louis two nights from now for a seventh game, just as it was in the first round. Goal could score! and 19 seconds into this hockey game on a dump in that looked like it was going to bog down. The Blues bogged down. Two men stuck in the corner. Neil Broughton fished it out back to Chris Dahlquist. No screen, perhaps tipped, but the tip was out near the blue line if it was touched at all. Good low shot, perhaps even a deflectable shot, but Chris Dahlquist has scored on it. The first goal of the game has given the North Stars a 1-0 lead 19 seconds into the third. A guy who was traded here earlier in the season has never scored a Stanley Cup goal until this one. 40 minutes and 19 seconds of scoreless hockey. Brian Glenn moves it ahead. Dumps it to the corner glass. Chino Cavallini is back. Shoves it off the boards for Brett Hall. Watch tightly as he's been all night long by Stu Gavin. Then to Paul Cavallini, then over for Brother Gino again. Pass ahead for Adam Oates. Oates dropped it off for Gino Cavallini. Dumps a shot from 80 feet, and it's scooped up by Glenn. Brian Glenn dumps it back along. Gavin tries to swat it further, gets it for Bobby Smith. Smith ahead along with Bellows, left it behind, tried to recover and couldn't. Gino Cavallini brings it back. His shot, and that juggled by Casey, and then poked away to the board. Oates spins one. Gino Cavallini couldn't get it to the front because of Chambers. Moving it on is Bobby Smith. Dahlquist with his first ever cup goal. Broughton and Modano got the assist at 19 seconds of the third period. Jeff Brown with a pass. On the stick of home. Stepped into by Gagne. Puck turned over to Modano. Prop the drive. And that deflected high. Into the seats and out of play. Jeff Brown hurt, but seems to be all right. Back on his feet. A minute 29 into the third, and the North Stars leading 1-0. The Blues now have to try and survive this surge that's going to come to the North Stars. The crowd is behind them. 
The adrenaline is flowing for the Stars. They want a second one real bad right now. Brian Propp had his shot deflected by Scott Stevens on a real good defensive play. So hard for a defenseman to make up his mind to move out to that guy in the high slot. Stevens did save the day. Off the tie-up, it's scooped to the back. This is Wilkinson with a drive and a stick save made by Riendo. Lowry tries to get ahead, and Madonna right on it. Scott Stevens leads it on. Big shot, and that was smothered by Giles. Tries to play it ahead and got help from Prop, and here come the North Stars again. Mike Madonna ahead with it. He's got Gagne, had to reach for the pass, and that slowed things down. The Blues recover quickly and bring it back up in the person of Tunnel. Lays it back in deep and going to get it as Dahlquist, the hero of the game thus far. Two minutes gone in the third period. Back on now with this is Prop. Picked up by Madonna. Back to Prop. Shoveled one that went wide. We welcome those of you who have been watching the game played between Los Angeles and Edmonton. Minnesota has scored early in the third. Dahlquist from Broughton and Madonna at 19 seconds, and they lead in this game 1 0. That was after Minnesota outshot St. Louis in the second 18 2. Both teams have won a period in this game. St. Louis defensively in the first, and Minnesota with the offense in the second. And here comes Broughton. Big drive. And Played around the boards, and Broughton goes after it. Marois trying to wedge him off. It is Duchesne flipping it in front, and Harold snaps to the corner. Dolan in on him. Old Dolan trying to play it along. Still battling. Got it to Broughton. Broughton wedged down by Hall. Puck along the boards to Dolan. Stepped into by Snaps. Tomlinson there, too, able to fight it away. Tries to work it ahead for Hall. Down goes Duchesne. Spinning with it, Mark Tenorti. Back up now for Broughton. Neil Broughton stepped into by Butcher. Minnesota in the midst of a change. That's why Broughton was all along. Falling down as Paul Cavallini gets up and slugs it back down, and there'll be an icing on this one. They're standing again. Early in the third. Their boys are ahead. Had his best friend come to his aid on this shot. Sometimes they're against you, sometimes they're with you. Those red pipes were working with them on this one. Right off the crossbar, Neil Broughton. Johnny on the spot to pick up a loose puck in the neutral zone. That close to being a 2-0 hockey game. That would have been a huge hole for the Blues to climb out of. Bobby Smith on the draw with Quinn. 16.43 left in the third. Minnesota ahead 1-0. Rindemore gave it up to Madonna. Spins it right back, and Bobby Smith reaches it. Stepped into by Butcher. Worked along by Bellows. Tunnel there. Madonna right in on it. Comes to Butcher once more. Garth Butcher roughed by Madonna, but it's rolled along now for Dan Quinn to feather back out, and here's a two on one, but Chambers up with the puck. Bellows able to move back in with it. Bellows looks for a pass. Fanning on it was Glenn. Loose puck in front. Bumpers get it back in his Stars have gone up 2-0. Absolute persistence by Bobby Smith. He had to lead them. We talked about him before this game from an inspirational standpoint, and now he has given him the lead on the scoreboard. Mike Madonna was ready for it, but you know what? Madonna wouldn't have been able to get that puck up as quickly as Bobby Smith with his little chip shot on the backhand. Riedo went down, Smith went up. 2-0 Minnesota. Bobby Smith. First goal of this series, third of the playoffs at 350. The chore now gets bigger for St. Louis. Especially the way the North Stars played in the second and are playing here in the third. It looks even bigger than two goals. Stevens a pass on to Lowry, hit by Giles. Puck picked up by Wilkinson, crisply on to Dolan. He's got Broughton, feeds it across. A shot and a pad stop by Riendo. We welcome those of you joining us from the Edmonton Los Angeles game. It's two to nothing, Minnesota. Two goals coming here in the third. Ball twist and Bobby Smith. North Stars trying to wrap it up. Kurt Giles takes it. Has Madonna making the sweep back, but hands it over for Wilkinson. Neil Wilkinson tried to flip one along, but we get a stoppage of play on an offside pass. 
15 25 to go in the third minnesota two nothing The crowd quiets once again as Tenorti played ahead for Madonna. Hit by Butcher. Madonna drills it off of the skates of the linesman Gord Grossaker. Tip back out for Adam Oates. Oates just dumps it back down. John Casey out of his goal bunts one, but right there to take it is Dahlquist crisply back on for Gagne, and he flips it back down. It's going to be an easy game if the North Stars play it smart. That last little flip by Gagne, now they're going to set up. St. Louis has to go into their breakout patterns, but the game is a lot easier from a Minnesota standpoint all of a sudden. The Blues with three shots on goal in the last 25 minutes of play. Butcher moving in. Glenn right on him. Puts the check on him, and down went Butcher. Gino Cavallini dealt it behind. Chambers trying to get to it. Wedge is there with Adam Oates. Along the boards, Oates tried to get some help from Gino Cavallini. The North Stars right on him, though, and Madonna picked it up and flipped it out. And right on Brett Hall, Stu Gavin. Of all of the moments of this hockey game, you know that Stu Gavin, all the moments in this series, the last 14 minutes and 20 seconds of this third period, Stu Gavin's going to have to be like blue on Brett Hall. Snaps fired it wide. Brian Glenn to get it there. Merwa able to glove it down, plays it back over for Snaps. If you're just joining us, 2 0 Minnesota. It was scoreless through two. Gall, Quist, and Smith have connected here in the third for the North Stars. Snips forced back by Bobby Smith. Plays it over for Marwa again. Mario Marwa to Oates. Chips it in deep. Tomlinson going after it. Hacked one to the goal. Casey will just hang on there. Let's pause for this regional break. Going to take a quick St. Louis goal to get this crowd out of the game. Off the faceoff. Puck punch by Casey. Picked up by Ulf Dahlen. Laid ahead. Broughton and he skates it down. Broughton with the drive and that one sailed by the glove hand of Riendo. To the corner they go after it. Old Dolan there. Stepped into by Butcher. Along the boards they play. Duchesne right back for Dolan once more. Scott Stevens on him. Gives him some lumber. Wedged by Giles. Duchesne after it. And we get a stoppage of play as they rule that it had not been kept in back at the point. So a neutral ice face off to result. If it's not Stu Gavin, it'll be Gaetan Duchesne. Duchesne is out there, this time against the tunnel line. But Brett Hull will have either Stu Gavin or Duchesne glued to him. You gotta know, though, that Bob Gainey's number one choice is Stu Gavin. Gavin's done an outstanding job on Brett Hull. Hull is still left with few options. The open ice in the neutral zone that he had through the first two periods is now gone. Gavin is following him everywhere. He has got no option now but to go right to the net and stand there. Try to let Adam Oates do his magic the way he was in the first period. Giles spins it along for Dolan. Lays it ahead for Neil Broughton. Has Prop alongside. And what a strong game Prop has played tonight. Brown back to pick this one up. No team has kept Hull and Oates pointless for two successive games. The North Stars are en route to doing that. All season long, nobody ever did it. Two games in a row. Once two different teams did it on one occasion. That back in October, but no single opponent was able to hold them off twice. 13 shots by the Blues, one in this period. North Stars with four, and two have gone in. Good things happen here, Bob Gainey said, but we have to remember to make good things happen. It's not automatic that they're home and win, but Minnesota has lost only two of 20 here since near the All-Star break, and in the playoffs, they've won the last four in a row. Delayed offside, puck picked up by Dahlquist, dumped around now for Bellows, who tried to tip further, but the delayed offside is now whistled down. Most of the whistles we can't hear. Got a big splash right up here in the booth. That wave spilled over. Well, Cavallini goes back to get it. Riendo sets it up. Cavallini takes it there. Flips it high, waiting for a dog whist. Taking it is Tenorti. 
Dumps it back off and Butcher cuts it. Throws it back and the North Stars turn again. And all this time, seconds go off the clock. Clock the enemy of the Blues right now, but still a lot of time. 12-15 to go in the third. They have to get two and hold the North Stars off to force overtime. Offside pass. Again, a stoppage of play. Let's pause for this regional break. A banner for John Casey. There are banners for almost every North Stars player here. There's not really any place to hang them, so they just carry them and display them when play is stopped. Brown and Stevens are back on defense, and they play some catch with it. Oates dumps it in. Hall starts in after it, held off by Gavin. Casey could play it. Around they wind it over for Madonna, and Madonna just flips it back out. Jeff Brown with it there, off of Gagne's skates. Hall chops it back in, stopped by Casey, set for Chambers. Yanked away from Tomlinson, taken by Madonna. Lost to Tomlinson again, and Oates to the point to Stevens. Slides it across, and Brown with it. Brown, fire, save, made by Casey. Rebound, another save. They scramble for it. Up with it to shovel it back down is Chambers, as Hall was right at the front, but couldn't reach it. 11.20 to go in the third. 2-0 the North Stars. Jeff Brown up with it. And the North Stars are no different from any other team in big situations trying to protect the two-goal lead. They will sag back in. If the Blues are smart, they'll look for their point men. They will be open. Broughton fires, and that one tipped wide by Stevens. Adam Oates to play it. Sweeping in is Broughton, so he has to be sure, and gives over for Brindamore. Watched by Wilkinson. Brindamore beats too far for Scott Stevens. Giles taps it off. Rushing to it is Oates and pumps it loose. Pivoting with this is Steve Tuttle. Tried to give it to Oates behind, and he fought it loose, but Wilkinson quickly on it. A pass over for Brindamore. Yanked it away. Wilkinson has taken down Oates. Trying to sweep it loose. It came in front and across the goal now. Now it's Tuttle. And that one tipped back out. Ten and a half to go in the third. Your profit, Bill. They're getting their chances. As the North Stars have sagged back some. In this period, they've had four shots. They haven't had a shot for about the last five minutes since they scored the goal. It was the fourth shot that Bobby Smith put in, so it's been even more than five minutes, almost seven. St. Louis has come up with just three shots of their own in this period. Butcher to get this has Paul Cavallini nearby. Ten minutes to go in the third. Right on the nose and ahead with this comes Quinn. Angles it to the corner. Gino Cavallini wedged off by Brock. Still the battle continues. Puck frozen. Play stopped. Will return to the Met Sports Center in Bloomington, Minnesota after this. And Brett Hall continue to be the big threats for St. Louis. This is when the point men were open. Jeff Brown with a shot. He just wanted to get it through. Brett Hall with a chop at it. Adam Oates was to the side. Dave Tomlinson there as well. This is what we said Brett Hall is going to have to continue to do. See Stu Gavin? That's as close as Stu Gavin has been to Brett Hall, and he still hasn't been able to completely take him out of the game. You saw that as long as Hall has his stick loose, he's going to get a chance. All Jeff Brown needed to do was get it to the net. Paul Cavallini's shot didn't get to the net. It hit off of Lowry and is dumped back out by the North Stars. So Riendo watching, sets it up for Paul Cavallini. Leaned on by Bellows, puck escapes, back to Brian Glenn. Dumps it back in, and Paul Cavallini will turn to take it again. Quinn is out. The Blues are making a change. They bring out Brett Hull. Lowry is the other forward. Ahead with it is Dave Lowry. Watched by Chambers. Able to knock it away. Bobby Smith on to Madonna. Madonna stepped into by Paul Cavallini, and that turns it over for the Blues. Hull skating behind his own goal. 9-10 to go in the third. This one hit off Mark Tenorti skates. A balloon has floated down onto the ice right back where he played that one. Turned it on for Gavin. In tandem now with Gagne and Madano, and it's Gagne who rolls it back, and Harold Sneps who starts it the other way quickly. On to Bob Basson. Basson watched by Dahlquist. Right to the wall, he's taken. Dahlquist with a rousing hit. Harold Sneps with one of his own. The net dislodged, and we get a stoppage of play, and I think Andy Van Helleman is signaling a couple of players may come off, or perhaps no penalties at all. A rollicking game here. What about the other one? Let's check in. Things going on in the other playoff game tonight. The LA Kings seemingly out of it are very much alive now. And talking about alive, what a hit by Chris Dahlquist. Bodies are flying everywhere in this tilt. 
there really wasn't that much hitting in this game in the early going. Guys seemed a little tentative. Sure, there were a couple of big hits the very first shift. Churla and Basil McRae ran over a couple of people. But here with 8.49 to go and the Stars leading two to nothing. Rule number one, play the body. Dave Gagne's got the penalty. They were not canceling penalties. There is a Blues power play. The third one of the night for St. Louis to Nordy for the penalty killing North Stars up with it. Lays it back off and moving it back out as Stu Gavin along with Broughton up front. Two on two. Gavin accelerates. Backhander. Oh, and just getting a piece of that was Riendo. Brindamore plays for St. Louis. Eight and a half to go in the third. A minute 35 to go on the Blues power play. And Jeff Brown bumped into the linesman, Randy Mitt. Chambers moving back. And that one went off of Oates. What a strange play that was when the Blues seemed to start to open it up on that side. Back on now comes Paul Cavallini again. Feeds it for Brindamore. Stepped into by Giles. Puck kept by Paul Cavallini over the hall. But we get a stoppage of play. And the ruling was that puck had come back outside. It was Andy Van Helleman himself who ruled the stoppage and is signaling now a hand pass. It is so rare when an official winds up in the way of the play, especially a linesman and especially a play that's developing there. But Randy Mitt had just wound up in the tracks of Paul Cavallini, who was trying to move it in. He must have been anticipating play along the boards, and that's why he stepped out. But by stepping out, he stepped into it. So Mitten, the veteran of 19 years of NHL experience, 42 years of age from Edmonton, has dropped the puck to get play underway again. A minute five for the North Stars to kill. 7.50 left for St. Louis to attack and get a couple. Minnesota leading in the game, two to nothing. Dahlquist from Broughton and Madano at 19 seconds of the third. Smith from Bellows and Madano at 3.50 of the third. Pass ahead now for Brindamore. Flips one on for Hall, but he couldn't find the handle of that. And then Oates knocked down by Duchesne. Duchesne lifts it back out. If Andy Van Helleman was going to cut the Blues a break, it would have been right there. It would have been a five on three for 40 seconds. No call on Duchesne, though. Offside is called against St. Louis. 33 seconds still on the St. Louis power play. That much of a chance to get back to within one. Good play by Sean Chambers. You stand up at the blue line and make that move to the oncoming puck carrier. You force him to the side. If you force him to the side, the timing has to be perfect on the wings, and that time it wasn't. Adam Oates went offside. But credit Sean Chambers. This guy has impressed me. The North Stars certainly don't want to lose him to the San Jose franchise. Sean Chambers has been a tower of power. All of their young defensemen in the playoffs so far. Mark Tenorti. Brian Glynn, Dahlquist, Sean Chambers, Neil Wilkinson, and one veteran, Kurt Giles. Boy, the six of them over the last few games have played solid D. Out of the University of Alaska at Fairbanks, Sean Chambers, the Michigan native. Steering is Casey with a big goal stick. Chambers right there to follow the direction. Tenorti lays it along for Gavin. 20 seconds for the North Star still to kill off. Blues go back to get it. Scott Stevens up with it behind the net. Rotten drips by as a tacit four checker. Seven minutes to go in the third. The last ten of the power play. Stevens a shot turned aside by Casey. Tomlinson dumps it to the back. Played across to Stevens. Hands on for Oates. Hall at the front. Now check that Tomlinson as a shot by Stevens is tipped to the seats. Penalty box empty. 2-0. Donnelly's goal. Grant Fuhr injured his right arm and wrist. He has left the game. And in, Bill Ranford. Ranford lost game number one in overtime to the Kings. Kings lead it 3-2. 13.5 to, to go in the third. Well, we were away. They were chanting Norm, Norm, Norm for the owner. 
owner of the team, Norman Green. He was holding up a big sign. He didn't turn it this way. I don't know what it says, but he was standing there holding up a huge sign. Up with this is Bobby Smith. Well, Norm rarely misses an opportunity like that on television, but just didn't quite catch it in time. We understand it was a promotion for season tickets, and he'll be the first to admit the best promotion for that is this. 2-0, North Star, 6-10 to go in the third. Paul Cavallini rushes it back for the Blues. Shovels one that's gloved right down by Tenardi. Starts it on for Mark Bureau. Bureau crosses, feeds prop, and a shot! Skipped off of Paul Cavallini, and then off of Riendo. To a side battle in the corner. Gino Cavallini steps in, the puck for Bureau. Hurried it back, but the Blues are able to turn it back out. 30 shots for the North Stars, 16 for the Blues, including four in this period and just two in the second. Stevens rushes it back. Hands on for Brindamore, eyed up by Brian Glenn. Brindamore flips and it's right in on goal and Casey made that save. Shoveled off by Bureau to the point. Oates a shot and Bureau went sprawling. Coming by to get it is Chambers. Yanks it on for Brian Glenn again, trying to reach it. A follow up by Chambers once more. Pulls his way in. Down to the ice he goes. Sends it to the corner. Madonna in to get it, but let it go. As the clock now down to 5-10. Stevens playing it for the Blues. Working it back up for Rod Brindamore. Eyed up by Tenorti. He gets by him. Oh, was he ever hit high and hard by Dahlquist. Play continues, and Tenorti puts it back out. Brindamore chopped down by Madonna. Do these look like the defenseman that backstopped a 68-point effort during the regular season? What a brand-new world out there. Brindamore to the back. Oates with a shot, kneeling to make a play to Alquist. Up with this now is Mark Tenorti. Tenorti shovels it along. Oates to keep that one. Waits, then drills one off the boards, hoping for a bounce. They finesse it to the outside of the goal, but hanging on is Casey. Another standing ovation. 4.31 to go in the third. 2-0 to home. Both ends in front of Riendo. Mark Bureau to Brian Klopp. He got a decent shot away. Deflected, just about handcuffed Riendo. At the other end, you hope your players have enough courage to make these blocks. Mark Bureau down in front of a big blast by Adam Oates. And finally, Chris Dahlquist. What a oh. huge hit. It looked like he got him chest high at another time in another situation and with another referee that might have been called, but give Chris Dahlquist some credit. He didn't back in. He wasn't afraid. He went right at Brindamore. Proud Blues team will throw everything they can at John Casey in these last four and a half minutes. Paul Cavallini back to get it. Bellows and Smith and Gavin. And because Gavin's out, you have to think that Brett Hall is too, but not this time. Up to the back, shoveled by, that time by Hall, and back up with it, now comes Gavin, moving in, drops it back across the Bellows, and it in front, and it was sent wide by Chambers, and across the goal now. Well, Brett Hall fooled us, he was at the point, we were looking the forwards up front, and they decided to station him back at the right defense. So he's all over, ahead comes Oates, lays it off the boards, Casey out to get it. Worked back along by Chambers, but taken by Bassett. Can't get to the front because of Chambers. Centers and Casey turned it aside. Chambers flips one. The Blues drop back again. The big clock says 3.30 to go. Pass on for Gino Cavallini. Giles steps into him. To the corner they go. Tunnel sent to the boards and glass by Duchesne. The battle continues on the wall. Pulling away is Adam Oates, chopped at by Tenorti. Oates again centered, quick shot by Hall, and waving at it with the glove was Casey as it bought the glass. Along the near board, Stevens flips one across. Hall can't get to it, it's Tenorti instead. Mark Tenorti lays it off the skates of Randy Mitten, the linesman, and back to the Blues line, three minutes to go. Adam Oates trying to pull free, and Old Dolan, like a helicopter, trying to knock it away. On with this, now comes Stevens. Good rush by Stevens to Gino Cavallini. Set one in front, and Stevens couldn't mash it home. The net dislodged, and play stopped once more. Norm Green's a happy guy, but he's got two minutes and 46 seconds to go before he gets real happy. Scott Stevens was in a perfect chance to shoot here, perfect position, but he passed. Cavallini back to him, watch Stevens fan on the shot. Right on the tape, he just missed it.
pointless for the second game straight. All in Oaks. Have they ever worked out there? But have the North Stars too. Saw them get 105 points alive. Down three to one to Detroit. Facing elimination, they won four games to three. Down three to one to Minnesota, they made it 3-2. Will it be 3-3 or will the North Stars reach the final four? 2.46 left. Off the faceoff. Shot by Holly scores! Brad Hall off the draw. And the St. Louis Blues are back to within one. This building went absolutely from a frenzy to a huge building that you could hear a pin drop in. Nobody could get to Brett Hall. Too many assignments here. Big jam up. Hall came in. What a super play. The great scorers do it. Instead of firing it, maybe this angle will show it. Watch Brett Hall pull the puck close to his body right there to pull it by the jam up that was in front of him. Man, did he find daylight. Single pass. John Casey, and the North Stars are not going to hold Brett Hull and Adam Oates off the score sheet two consecutive games. No doubt Adam Oates will pick up an assist. That goal will definitely go to Brett Hull. Two to one, 242 to go. and 40 seconds to go in the third and the Blues have come back to within one. Pass misfires for the breaking Gino Cavallini and so Dolph was back to take it. Which of these teams is made of the stronger stuff? Bobby Smith knocked this one down. Looks toward Bellows, controls. Bobby Smith with a couple of players moving to him and then Brown takes him to the corner board. Adam Oates coolly playing this, looked at by Smith. The puck pot loose back near Gavin, but he has to drop back now as Adam Oates starts to move it back. We're watching Riendo. He's crept out to the hash marks. Tino Cavallini dumps it back in. Casey slugs it along. Cavallini there giving a good rock to the boards and glass by Tenorti. Puck up the boards. Kept alive for a moment, but it went off a drop, and the Blues have to drop back. Riendo still in the goal. 145 to go in the third. On now is Stevens a drive and a pad stop made by Casey. He tipped it to the corner. Casey guides it the other way. Brown is waiting to finesse it back, but it's knocked down to the high stick of Stu Gavin, and for that reason, play will be stopped. What a perfect time now, perhaps, for Brian Sutter to bring Vincent Riando to the bench. It worked one time now because Stu Gavin reached up with the high stick. Faceoff will be deep to Casey's left. No sign yet. Brian Sutter's not even looking at Riando. Oh, yeah, now he is. Now he is. A pane of glass was loosened by that Tenordian check in the corner, but now it's been straightened out again as you're watching the Blues bench. The puck is one by three inches. That's four by six feet. But it's been hard to get in there tonight. The North Stars have done it twice, the Blues once, and all the scoring in the third period. all of the 15,500 on their feet. 1.36 to go. The net empty at the other end. With the extra attacker out there, you can move a guy up into the middle of the ice. Number two for the Blues, Scott Stevens. See him patrolling there. 
He will try and get in front of either Stu Gavin or Neil Brought. That will hold one of them up. He will end up with somebody else standing right beside him. Dan Quinn. That holds the second forward up. Sean Chambers is the third North Star. He can't go out to the point. If the draw gets back to the point, the Blues are going to get a scoring chance. Will it work twice? Votes to draw it. Hall is in the shooting hole. Bobby Smith to take it for Minnesota. Randy Mitten to drop it. A false start. Set again. Off the tie up. Hull couldn't reach. Ahead is Gavin. Hooked down. Going back to get it is Jeff Brown. Worked it along now for Stevens. Now it's Chambers blasting. Oh, and that just bumped wide. I think it went glance off of the defenseman background. Now he has trouble in front. It hit the outside of the goal from Broughton. Broughton back behind the net, which is empty. Brown, the surrogate goaltender in front. Puck turned behind now for Brown, and the Blues have got to cool off. Give it away to Smith. Shot, score! only goal Bobby Smith was right back out there for the next big draw Bob Ganey said you're still my man the North Stars survived the draw down ice pressure and Bobby Smith has made it a three to one game with a minute and four seconds to go Smith at 18.56 unassisted the net empty again Tenorti down Stepped into along the boards and spun around by Bassett. A punch loose by Casey. Yanked around the boards by Sean Chambers. 45 seconds to go. Back to get the loose one. Paul Catalini after him is Dolan. Wrapped around the boards. Bobby Smith up with it again. Along for Dolan. Remember the net's empty. To the boards, they continue to battle. Clock ticking down 31 and 30. Bassett turning away. Hands it over for Paul Catalini. Back up ice, it's shaken across, and Hall comes in. Vanessa to Oates, to the slot, chipped away from Butcher. Paul Catalini is not safe. Rebound, they pull away, they score! The Blues have gotten back to within one. 17 seconds to go. You had to know this should end like this. With a Brian Sutter team. Pushing right down to the final moments, anything that they can get. Refusing to give up. Bob Bassett in front, Brett Hall and Adam Oates right there as they have been all game, and then Garth Butcher finally coming in from his point. The score. Timeout St. Louis. 17 seconds to go. 3 to 2, Minnesota. With 17 seconds to go, you can't go over general assignments. You go over specific assignments. They need a win on the faceoff and a set play. It may either be a long cross-ice pass, most likely a hard dump around, at least to get it deep into the zone, hoping for a faceoff if the play itself doesn't work. Problem for St. Louis, Vincent Riendo will have to stay on the bench. They lose the draw. North Stars will probably take a shot at it. Riendo looks on. Neil Broughton and Adam Oates. 
Biggest face off of the season for Minnesota. The Blues get it. They try to flip it in, but it is not loose. And Gavin just waiting now down to the last 10. He pumps a high one that's gloved down by Paul Cavallini. Paul skips one in. It went wide. The third biggest upset in the history of the National Hockey League playoffs has just occurred. Some of the proudest moments and some of the most painful moments. A very proud Minnesota North Stars team. They deserve everything they got in this series. They played hard, and so did that man. Brett Hull can be proud of his effort.